hi everyone ravi this side welcome to engineering adda so today in this video we are going to see the difference between rest controller annotation and controller annotation so how they are uh, behaving and what is the basic difference between both of them we are going to cover and then try to implement also so first of all uh, let me try to give you the basic difference between both of these annotations and then i will try to practically use these two annotations in the real life implementation in a spring boot application and try to show you the difference between both of them when coming to the implementation so everything we are going to cover in this video so let's get started for that so first of all let me try to go to the next slide and try to show you what is the difference between both of the annotations so uh, you can see uh, there are a couple of differences i have listed out and before going to the differences first of all i just want to tell you that when both of the annotations are used at any class then that means that class is dealing with the http request okay so coming to the first difference is response serialization okay so in a at the rate controller annotated class the return value of a method is typically the name of view view means entity or a model and view object okay so when you are using at the rate controller on a class then the method inside that class would be either returning the name of a view or model and view object okay which is resolved by the view resolver to generate the response on the other hand in a at the rate rest controller annotated class the return value of a method is automatically serialized into the response body okay typically as a json or the xml so most of the time i have used at the rate rest controller in uh, all of my other videos or previous videos you can see and we have directly uh, seeing those response when we are implementing get mapping or post mapping or any other mapping so we are getting the values serialized in the form of json so so this is the first difference uh, and the difference is very crucial it is uh, in the response serialization now coming to the purpose so at the rate controller is typically used for traditional web applications that generate views it handles request performs some processing and returns a view that will be rendered by a view resolver coming to at the rate controller on the other hand is used for building rest apis it focuses on returning data directly without rendering the views it renders or it uh, sends the data in the form of serialized data which is json or xml now coming to annotation combination so at the rate rest controller is a combination of these two annotation which is at the rate controller and at the rate response body okay the at the rate response body annotation is automatically applied to all the methods in the rest controller class indicating that the return value should be serialized and included in the response body in the contrast in at the rate controller class you need to explicitly use at the rate response body on the individual methods to indicate that the return value should be included in the response body okay so this is the crucial difference between both of the annotations so when we are using at the rate rest controller on a class then it is understood that the return type of the methods inside that class would be serialized that means we are uh, automatically using at the rate response body to that methods but when you are annotating any class with at the rate controller then method inside that class if it is returning a view and you want to serialize it into uh, the json or the xml then you need to use at the rate response body to that method okay now let me try to go to the next slide and these are some other differences default view resolution so in at the rate controller class the return value of a method is typically resolved to a view name which is then processed by the view resolver to generate the response and in at the rate rest controller class since the focus is on returning the data it there is no default view resolution the return value is directly serialized into the response body coming to the use case at the rate controller is commonly used in the application that renders html views uh, so you i already have showed you that uh, this is used in the earlier application so you can see it is used commonly used in the application that renders the html views and handles form submissions and form server side rendering where at the rate rest controller is commonly used in the application that provides data through the apis 
such as JSON or the XML responses, which are consumed by the client side application or the mobile application. So when we are going to the implementation of both of the APIs, I will try to show you. Okay. So it's worth noting that REST controller notation is available since Spring Boot 4.0, while controller and notation has been around since earlier version of the Spring MVC. So uh, in the earlier application, we are using at the rate controller and now we have the at the rate risk controller. So uh, after the spring 4.0, we are using that. Okay, so these are some basic difference between both of them. And now I have already implemented one Spring Boot application there. I have implemented the CRUD operations and created couple of APIs there. So I will try to uh, create some another controller class with at the rate risk controller and at the rate controller and then try to show you the difference between both of them. Okay, so let me try to go to the uh, IntelliJ. You can see this is the IntelliJ and I already have created this application for you. Okay, so let me try to brief you about the application. You can see this is the entity class for us and we have four attributes here ID name price and the quantity coming to the repository. Uh, this is the product repository which is extending the JPA repository and this is the product service interface where we have created the CRUD methods and coming to the implementation we have implemented these methods here. Okay, now coming to the controller I have created this controller with the help of at the rate rest controller. Okay, and these are the some APIs that I have already created to map this uh, method inside the product service impl which are the CRUD methods. Okay, so everything we have created here and I have also added the swagger in it. Okay, so that we can document our APIs. So let me try to tell you that if you don't know how to create a CRUD application in a Spring Boot application uh, using MySQL database, then you can watch. There are a lot more videos on my channel where I have covered this concept. Okay, so you can watch it out. And if you don't know how to integrate Swagger, then you can also watch it out. Uh, there are videos on my channel to how to integrate Swagger in the Spring Boot application. Uh, these are the very crucial things you need to learn. Okay, now coming to the application properties file, I have uh, listed out this configuration for database connectivity. So here you can see we have provided the URL, username, and the password, and these are some additional configuration for the Hibernate, and this is the port number on our which application will be running. Okay, so these are uh, the things about the application that I have developed. Now what I will do, I will try to comment out this uh, product controller. APIs and then try to create two different controllers where for first of them I will be using at the red rest controller and for the second of them I will be using at the red controller and then try to show you the basic difference between both of them in the implementation. Okay, so before uh, going to comment it out let me try to show you how the swagger is looking like and so for that I am just running my application and yeah it will be up in few seconds you can see this is up on the port number 9000 if you'll go to the browser and if you'll go to this let me try to refresh this and here you can see these are the apis that i have created okay so if you'll go to the find all api let me try to try it out and execute it you can see we have this five products in our db okay that we are fetching so let me try to minimize it and if you don't uh, want to integrate swagger then you can directly create those applications and then come here to the postman and try to hit this from the postman itself so both of the things you can do so let me try to go to the IntelliJ and first of all let me try to comment out this APIs from here okay so just comment it out and then try to see how it is looking like in the swagger. Okay, now let me try to rerun this and then try to see. Okay, so this is up, go to the browser refresh it and here you can see no APIs are there. Now let me try to go to the IntelliJ and try to create uh, two additional classes where for one of them I will be using at the rate rest controller and for the second I will be using controller. So create a Java class let's say uh, product 
wrist controller and let me try to create the another class let's say product simple controller okay because I have already created product controller class that is uh, why I'm not going to uh, use same name okay so we are good now so go to the product rest controller and try to annotate this class with at the rate rest controller okay so, and I will try to implement uh, let's say git api first and then try to show you the difference between both of them so coming to the product simple controller let me try to annotate this with at the rate controller class okay coming to the product rest controller here let me try to create one get mapping so when you are going to create a get mapping uh, you have to use the uh, implemented method inside the product service right so let me go to the product service and walk you through what all the methods i have so i have this uh, find all find all pro top products uh, with the length and we have insert product into the db get product by id update product and delete product so first of all let me try to go to the find all and let me try to show you what we are doing in the implementation so this find all product is uh, using this product repo interface and using the find all which is a jpa provided method which is finding out all the products from the db and then returning it so this is what its work is and this is uh, this method we are going to use in our apis okay so let me try to go to the product rest controller and here we have to auto wire the product service okay so private so that we can use the method inside that okay so private private product service product service and let me try to create one get mapping and uh, let's say it is products or you can say list of yeah list of product and let's say it is returning the list of products and uh, let's say the method name is get all products and return product service dot find all okay so let me try to import this from here and import the list as well from the util so we are good now now let me try to give you the flow so here when we are going to hit this api uh, what we are going to do we are going to call this find all method which is inside the product service if we'll go to this method uh, let me try to go and here it is doubting to the product service if you'll go to the implementation of it you can see it is using product report to find out all the products from the db okay so let me try to go to the product rest controller class and here you can see we are not using any re uh, response body so we are basically what we are doing we are fine uh, we are calling the method which is find all which is inside the product service and going further the find all method inside the product service is using find all method of the jpa provided method which is finding out all the products from the db okay here not uh, here we are not converting anything right we are getting the data it is being converted to the json and then it is being returned now let me try to run this application and try to hit this api from the swagger or from the postman any of them you can use so just wait for a few seconds and yeah it is up if we'll go to the browser if we'll refresh it here you can see we get this api which is list of product if you'll go to it and if you'll go try it out execute it you can see you are able to see all the products here so it is directly converting our response to the json and then returning us okay now coming to the other class which is product simple controller where we are using at the rate controller now let me try to create one get mapping here as well okay so first of all let me try to auto wire the product service private product service and create one get mapping let's say products and create a list of product 
let me try to import the list and get all products and let me try to use this product service and use this find all and then simply return it from here okay now let me try to show you how it is behaving and then we'll try to see so just rerun this application okay so our application is up now let me try to go to the browser and try refreshing this minimize this and we are not getting this api right let me try to go there go to the product controller it is working come here it is not listing out our apis now uh, let me try to use at the rate uh, response body and then let me try to show you uh, how it is working so let me try to cut it from here put it here and let me try to rerun this application Okay, so our application is up. Go to the browser, refresh this. And here you can see, now we are able to see our APIs. Okay, so earlier when we were not using at the rate response body, then this was not converting our response, which we are getting from the, uh, from the database. That response is not directly converted to the JSON or the XML. Okay. So we need to explicitly map those responses using the view uh, view mapping. Okay. But when we are using at the rate uh, response body, then what it is doing, it is getting out all the response from the DB and then it is converting that to the JSON and then it is returning us. Okay. Now let me try to hit this API and I try to show you. So this is the API. Try it out and execute it. And here we go. We are able to see all the products. So we are able to hit this API and it is API. Its API is working fine. Okay. Now if you go to the IntelliJ, you can see. So let me try to show you uh, the real difference. Here you can see when we are using at the rate rest controller, we are directly getting the response and that response is being converted to the JSON. And then we are able to see the real data without using at the rate response body. But when coming to the uh, at the rate controller class explicitly we need to use at the rate response body annotation to the methods because these methods are not returning the json or the xml to us right these are not returning the serialized data to us we have to explicitly map these views okay so this is uh, the main difference between the at the rate controller and at the rate rest controller okay so this is about the video guys if you like the video please hit the like button and please subscribe the channel for more such content thanks